intro. Because you already did your intro. You could play the last one. Yeah, I could. <laughs> <laughs> I could. I could. Wait, wait, are you wearing the same shirt? Yeah, I just thought it would okay. be helpful for continuity <laughs> to actually have the conversation with my girlfriend this morning. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, it's the same color shade, but yeah. it seems to work in I the obvious. I wonder what I was wearing. Probably not my car, used car salesman jacket. Um, but Jason Story, uh, welcome back. That's Episode good to be here. two with Jason Story, we're turning it into a series. Well, we were talking after, like, we we stopped recording, and... I think we talked for like another f- 30 minutes or 45 minutes or so. And we're just like getting more and more excited because two people come working in this space talking about, about big ideas. Um, and so after that, we just kind of said we, we have to sit down again and explore this idea more about attraction and retention and what makes people stay and what makes them leave. And it's a conversation that's happening and. Midland and in Bay and regionally and the state of Michigan hiring a chief growth officer and really intentionally and aggressively spearheading this this idea. So we just wanted to meet up and talk shop a little bit. And one of the things that came out of our our messages back and forth after was this really brilliant way that you define attraction and retention because we use those two words and we just kind of assume that they're magical and they do things and you know, that's, that's all that needs to be said. But we were talking and you had the seven step or seven point definition that makes it even more specific. And I thought it was just brilliant. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Just, just how brilliant you are. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, <laughs> no pressure, uh, but I'm super geek for the conversation. I can't wait to dig in. Yeah. So time to sound smart. Um, so <laughs> we, you have in this, seven point framework it done something I'm going to preface it and then we're going to talk specifics done something really important in that if if as a community we have a challenge um, an obstacle to face doesn't have to be workforce development or traction retention it could be anything from roads to why isn't the trash getting picked up consistently to housing to issues in the neighborhood what you know whatever it is um, it, it's really important to before you, we start talking about how to solve this thing, your opinion, the thought, it's important to first have a conversation about what the challenge is, gain understanding, make sure everybody's on the same page, define words so that everybody has similar concepts of what's being talked about, and then proceeding into, okay, now that we have a, a full idea of what the situation is, how do we then solve that? And I, I think what's brilliant about presenting attraction and retention in this way is that it's a step towards saying, when we say attraction and retention, w- what is really going on? Mm-hmm. And if we talk about what is really going on in forming these ideas of do I stay here and f- build a life here or do I do it someplace else, um, that informs so much the practice that happens after because mm-hmm. you have a clear understanding. You're not, just, you're not just guessing anymore. You have a plan and you have a purpose based on the information that you have. So talk to me a little bit about how, how this framework came about, how, how you started kind of gnawing on this idea, and we'll jump into some specifics. Yeah, yeah. So the work's nested at the Midland Business Alliance and through the economic development lens. And one of the key dimensions there is, is people. So you know, with the business in mind, certainly we're considering work factors or the workplace, uh, but we're also realizing that you got to make provision for what that looks like outside of work as you live in your community, live in your neighborhoods, you live with your friends and family. So in taking a look at what we hear is the, you know, the the, the popular topic is attraction and retention. So you want to break that into pieces and say, well, what are we really looking at here? And it, it makes sense that that's why we talk is because it talks about well, where it starts and, and maybe where it ends. Mm. But so it starts with attraction. But there are things uh, in between those two spaces that dictate whether retention occurs. So what I've done in the work with the Midland Business Alliance is, is flesh that out so that we have a stronger uh, model because I think the model is going to infer the processes and the processes are going to influence the outcomes. 
You, you gave the example before we started recording. You had a conversation with Tony Stamas at, at the Midland Bus Business Alliance. Like, we don't just walk around saying, like, are you, how are you being retained today? Well, I'm at, a, like, a 72% retention. Like, you don't go around defining <laughs> it like that. You feel m kind of mushy about it or there's, like, nuance to it. Yeah, yeah so we, we can think of that maybe in the workplace setting and you can get objective facts on that is how many people ha have been absent or how many people have left the company or how many people have we had to let go. But when we think about that in the community space, it starts to look a lot different. And certainly before those things, such as being absent or, or, or taken off from a job or being asked to take off, there are things that occur. So when we think about the very beginning of this, even, we talk about, well, attraction. It's like, well, what is that exactly? And to try to make it simple to understand as well, just thinking relationally is if you can get someone looking your way, uh, then that's attraction. They haven't decided on you yet. Mm -hmm. They're just looking at you. So we don't want to dispense or confuse attraction with uh, choice. Um, and HR specialists in the workplace will think about this all the time where it's, it's easy to think about that at the community level is, has somebody chosen you? Yeah. Um, to, yeah. You know. In in marketing, we would use the word like attention. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't have somebody's attention, you, it doesn't matter what your message is, what your value is, anything, like, because to that person, you don't exist because their attention is somewhere else. The door isn't open, but you can't communicate anything to them. So you have to do something to capture their attention. And that's why branding is important. That's why people, a uh, huge companies invest millions of dollars on ridiculous old spice commercials <laughs> because they understand like the longer I have your attention, uh, the greater chance I have of you move, moving you down this line to eventually becoming a customer in this conversation, it's becoming a citizen or remaining a citizen. So that first of the seven steps is attract. Yeah. You got to get someone's attention to be able to attract. And what are you using to attract? You, you're demonstrating a value proposition in, mm -hmm. in the workplace. You're doing that through a job description or showing the what the company has to offer. And at the community lens as well, what does the community have to offer? And people are looking for both of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking earlier about maybe getting the kind of a word geek. And, and I do think about, you know, some of the terms that we use and how important they are. So when we talk about work life, you know, I'm not such a big fan because it presumes that when I'm at work, I'm not alive. Yeah. And I don't even like to go in as far as saying, well, what about professional and personal? I'd say, well, work can be highly personal. And I'd say that in a workforce where people want to connect their, their meaning and purpose and significance, that's definitely going to be a personal experience. So I like to think of work factors and non-work factors that go into people's decision making. You're mm -hmm. probably going to be able to get people's attention and attract them through both of those mechanisms because they're two things that people need. They need a place to be, and they need a place to be able to add value and receive value. I think, I think as you dive deeper into this definition of attract, something that you said is, is so important to say because sometimes the conversation is like, like what is the role of, of marketing in this, and what's the role of of actually like having value, having the jobs, having the quality of life, having the infrastructure that pe the educational system that people are are looking for, like those resources, like how do how do those interplay? And I think in this, as we define attraction, is you you, you have to have both of them. It uh, you'll never you'll never be successful over communicating a value that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. You can't pretend mm -hmm. like you're a community that you're not. You're like, you are what you are. Um, you can amplify the best you have to offer. And that's something that we do all the time. We do it as people. Um, we were talking before, like the, the example of going out on a date, like first date. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the haircut, you put on your favorite shirt and your pants and you, you put your best foot forward. You go on that date and you talk about things that you love and you, you try to be charming and you yeah, know, yeah. You, you're, you're, tr you're putting your best self forward. That's not being dishonest. Um, but it's what we do as humans. Doesn't mean that you don't also go to therapy. <laughs> you got to also be working on those challenges and get work, like becoming better, intrinsically better, but you can amplify the best you have to offer by also dealing with other things. And I think that's the role of marketing is, is saying, um, this is who we are. This is the best we have to offer. At the same time, those resources have to be real. And then we also have to say, 
education is really important to a lot of people. How can we make that better? Mm -hmm. um, we need more jobs. How can we get more jobs? We need to attract more businesses, both large and small here. How can we do that better? We can be doing that at the same time, be communicating the best we have to offer and also be communicating the fact that as a community, we're addressing those challenges. Because I think we have this impression that people want to be a part of a community that's perfect. But I think more attractive is uh, a community with potential. Yeah, that we can participate in making better. Yes, I, I have ownership in it. I, I look around and I see a community acting like a community because they're like, hey guys, we have to fix this. And the only way it's going to work is if we do it together. And immediately the best humans are like, oh, tell me more. <laughs> because that says like, this is a community that is going somewhere. I'm not looking for the perfect community that checks all my boxes, but this is an interesting community, a community that acts as a unit. And I th marketing can be uh, insp uh, aspirational as well. We can amplify the best we have to offer and then communicates to us as a community, like, guys, this is the bar that we have set for us. Mm -hmm. That means that anything less than this is unacceptable. And that means that we have to dive into an issue together. I think that's attractive. Yeah, it's it's this combination of what you can provide and what you can re receive. And yeah. in that metaphor that we're using is, is that's what's kind of happening is some encouragements or some promises, whether they're direct or indirect. And if you do all those right, then you might just be so lucky to, you know, in the mm -hmm. HR practices, acquisition or you acquire. OK, I've made the decision. Uh, I'm choosing you. Yeah. Tell me more is the next next part. So you have step one, attract kind of step number two is acquire. Now they've decided to talk, talk to me about kind of this, this stage of the psychology of attraction retention. Yeah. It's like, well, uh, I'm looking your way or this way, but i still need to make the decision. So in that, that's usually comes through a, um, a dialogue or a, a display of, of intentions, um, in the workplace that might be a job description or, or providing a sense of what your compensation package looks like mm -hmm. for the employer. That's talking about expectations and what they need and what they would like in reverse. I think in the community, it's a call to here's what we need help with, or here's a way you can get involved to, to take us further and to preserve what we have. And it's a little bit like that, that quote, it's not what, uh, it's not what your country can do from you, uh, for you. It's what you can do for your country. It's, it's, that's the right way to think about it. And I think that that's what provides people with a sense of calling to help inform that decision is, is that they want to be able to see a synchrony between those two things is, I see that I could be valued and I see that I could provide value. And there's all sorts of little uh, factors that would be specific to each case, but we need to understand that attraction is fundamentally different than acquisition. We could have a million people thinking about choosing us mm -hmm. or choosing to stay with us, and we could have zero people uh, making the decision to actually come with us or to stay with us. So yeah. if all we're doing or if we're doing too much monitoring on getting visibility but not getting conversion – then probably that's what we're going to have because that's what we're paying attention to. So yeah, and then that's I think where the having having substance, having value, um, really comes into play because once you have that attention, people go, okay, show me what you got, mm -hmm. and so now you ha now you have to tell the truth. And if you weren't telling the truth in step one, they're gonna be like, okay, I guess this isn't at all what I'm looking for. Um, as you were talking. You had a phrase in one of our conversations, like psychological contract. Yeah, was it's like it's a promise that's kind of yeah. seemingly mutual understood. And, and based on how well we communicate, we'll have a better chance of being in alignment of what we both think yeah. uh, the other is bringing for the other and expecting from the other. So like this acquisition stage kind of feels like working out the terms of that psychological contract. Like this is this is what I can bring to the table what can you bring to the table? What do each of us need? And what are we going to agree to? Can we agree to something? Do we move beyond this yeah. point at, at all? And so it kind of seems like this acquisition is, is people working out, how, are we, how can we actually make each other's lives better? That's beautifully said. It's, it's this sort of uh, negotiation. It's sort of formal and informal. In the workplace, it's certainly more formal than I'd say outside of the workplace. Because I've never um, met someone that handed me a description of their expectations mm -hmm. uh, outside yes. of a workplace setting, but it's all, so. But in between that, during the interview process or a panel, you're having these conversations, and and promises are being made or intentions are being made, yeah. um, and it's through those 
the demonstration of those intentions and promises that, that people on both parties or multiple parties make that that choice to say, okay, well, we're not just looking this way. We're actually going to choose this way. Yeah. I, you use the example of, of kind of an employee, employer situation saying like, well, how are we going to meet each other's needs? And I think that's such a great example because um, in attraction and retention, employers and how they interact with potential employees and their employees are... Are, it's such a critical part of this, you know, because you can attract a hundred thousand people a day to your community. And if every time they put in an application, they're getting ghosted, they're mm-hmm. not being treated mm-hmm. well, they're going through 17 rounds of an interview that takes four months to do. And then at the end, they're like, yeah, we can give you 12 grand a year. Are you cool with that? Um, it, 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 there's no acquisition taking place. I love what you're saying is, is in the, the organizational development speak, it's the employee organization relationship. Yeah. yeah. And, and that you can extend that to, to think about the, the person or the uh, community relationship. Those, those things are a little bit different, but they're not entirely different. It's this ongoing process of being able to um, provide value, receive value, and having a s- continuous sort of set of uh, fulfillment of promises and setting continued expectations and opportunities yeah. uh, that help um, foster that. So that critical decision to even be able to get to that point is, well, are they going to make the decision to commit to you or commit to that relationship in the first place? Mm-hmm. Um, so through attraction in and of itself, we actually don't have that commitment occurring. It's through the acquisition phase uh, where that commitment is occurring and it allows us to proceed. Uh, yeah. I, I- I also want to point out an example, I think, of this acquisition phase um, in like a more informal setting. So like uh, tourism kind of plays hand in hand with this idea of attraction and retention. How can we bring people who don't, who may have never been here before to come here and have a great experience? Um, So like tourists walking through a, a a community, or maybe they're there for a wedding or something like that. And they're like, oh, we got three hours to kill. Let's walk around downtown. Um, I think this acquisition phase happens at this informal level in situations like that because they walk through the downtown. And what do they see? Do they see um, public art? Do they see a beautiful community? Do they see people hanging out, walking around? Do they see um, a, a dense uh, downtown with every storefront filled, or do they see dirt and garbage and trash and vacant buildings and broken windows and all of those other places? That's, that's the unspoken contract that's being written in that this is who we are as a community. Look, we really care about ourselves and we care about, and we love ourselves so much and have so much pride in our community that we're willing to take care of it pick up trash, make it look good, all of these things. Or we don't really love ourselves all that much. We don't care all yeah. that much, you know, take it or leave it. That we're un, unknowingly or unspokenly writing this contract, this, this terms of agreement. And people walk into the downtown, they say, okay, that's for me. Like, this is exactly what yeah. I want. Or yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to agree to those terms because this isn't the kind of place I want to live in. Well, it works perfectly back to that idea, that metaphor of going on a date. It's like, yes. man, you could even put yourself together and get cleaned <laughs> up here. You can't take care yes. of yourself. Yeah. Uh, you know, what's that going to mean for me? Yeah. Um, and this idea of, of putting your best foot forward, putting yourself together, uh, showing that uh, you, you have the value within yourself to then be able to provide some value. Yes. Yes. I love it. So step one, attract. Step two, acquire. Step three, integrate. Tell me about this one. Yeah. And we, we might think of that in terms of like initiating or onboarding or, or welcoming. So it's okay. Okay. I've made the choice. We can all, I think, relate to the idea of what it's like to be on the first day of the job. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you've been like me, you've had some great uh, examples of that. You've had some not so great examples yep. of that where you might be in an elevator with someone. Uh, you know that they've worked there for a while because it's your first day Yeah, and they weren't in orientation with you. Uh, but they're not saying hello. Uh, they're not saying their name. They're not even looking at you, or maybe you don't know where the restroom is. Uh, you don't know, uh, where to go get the supplies that you need. You don't know the names of the people that are uh, all around you. Um, and we just think about, well, 
what does that initial steps of engagement look like? Because that's your first opportunity to show that you're going to live up to some of those promises that yeah. you've made. And this is the first moments where you're demonstrating some of the culture. We can think about that in the workplace, like I was saying, some of those examples. But you can think about that in the community as well. Uh, did somebody hold that door open for you? Uh, did somebody look you in the eyes and, and say hello or maybe even just give a bit of a smile? Mm -hmm. You're really looking for that match between uh, stated intentions or your expectations or what you're anticipating and then getting that true sense of being welcomed and, and getting a true sense of how you can start to participate. I think a little bit too about maybe the playground where uh, there's a bunch of kids already playing tag or, or some sort of game that they're making up and some new kid arrives to the to the table. They've showed up. They're kind of on the, the outside, the periphery. They're kind of standing there. They're doing their part. They're trying to kind of copy what they see happening. Mm -hmm. But if all those kids are not paying one bit of attention to welcoming this new kid uh, into the play, or if they're making it intentionally difficult for that person to feel like they're wanted, yes. chances are that they're not going to play as good as they could, if not just leave the playground entirely, or maybe in an adult sense, make a plan for leaving the playground because things aren't so easy uh, in yep. adulthood as they are in childhood. The, the timing of it is also so important. Yeah. To like you can't, you can't wait six months or a year to finally warm up to that employee. Like now you're one of us. You've been here for 12 months. Like that, that initial phase of time communicates to that person. Like, am, are they welcome here? Mm -hmm. Are they, is there a chance, even a chance they could become part of us? Mm -hmm. are, they, are they going to feel supportive? Are they going to feel like they can bring something of value, receive something of value in that moment? And if you don't, if you don't do it then, can you overcome that later on? Maybe. Chances are very low <laughs> because the, you, they've sat in months and months, maybe years of just like, people don't like me here. I'm not, I'm not worthy. I'm not worth enough. I'm not good enough. At, like, and then you start, I need to go someplace else where I, I don't feel this way all because the t that phase of time that greeting period, that integrating period was missed. You can't, yeah. you can't play catch up down the road. It's all sorts of stressful because like you said, you're trying to figure it out. If it's not going the way that you thought it would yeah. or as the way that it was stated, you're like, well, what changes? Is there something I'm not doing? Is there something they're not doing? Is, is uh, you know, something wrong? You're, you're trying to figure out what's wrong in order to try to make it right. Yeah. But as the newcomer... Uh, you don't have as much of that information on how to acquiesce or how to get familiarized and how to get welcomed. You're not quite sure what it is, especially if you're having, like in the workplace setting where you're having an interview or a job panel, your, your attention's all on you. Mm -hmm. But then if that same uh, group or same individuals walk right by you later and don't give you, you know, the time of day whatsoever, then you're like, oh, I see. Maybe that was a bit more of a transactional thing or yeah. it was just kind of to try to get me to say yes, but as a person or to try to actually see to it that, I'm feeling welcomed and also I'm equipped to do a good job. Uh, that's not so important as it was during that initial discussion when we were talking about acquiring. Yeah. If you talk about it in like sociological terms, like you, whether you're the employer or the immediate community or the neighborhood or the region, um, you have to be the one welcoming in those people. It doesn't, it, it's not never going to work the other way. You like, well, you're, you're here now. Cool. See a neglect yeah. or, you know, or you, the new person in the neighborhood is baking brownies for all of their new neighbors. Mm -hmm. Like, is that nice? Yeah. It shouldn't work that way. No, it shouldn't. Like those new neighbors have to come to that new house and say, welcome to the community. My name is Darlene. I can bake you spaghetti on Friday. So you don't have to like, <laughs> Now that's a person saying I am being welcomed in by this community, by these these strangers, and that creates this this bond of trust. If you if you talk about like trust in terms of a community, community moves at the speed of trust. Nothing mm -hmm. can happen that's without good. trust. If if you have a low amount of trust, you have a low amount of momentum, engagement, resources, support, sustained effort over time because nobody trusts that this is actually going to happen, that change is actually going to be made, that they're going to receive some kind of value or provide some kind of value. But if you have a high level of trust, like that's the gasoline on the fire. Now I can trust you, Jason's story, to support me when I need it. I can support you when you need it. 
And now we can make things happen because we have this bond of trust. And I think at this integration level, like from a marketing standpoint, from a community standpoint, like this is the trust creation. Like, okay, you've got my attention, attracted me. You've acquired me. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here because we've agreed on the terms. Now integration says you have to communicate, we have to communicate to each other that we will actually provide what we said we would. Yeah, and, and uh, I'm out American leaders, it seems like this morning, but I think Ben Franklin got this really good. He said, one of the first things that you do if someone new moves into your community is you ask them for a favor yes. because that allows you to introduce yourself. It also it opens an invitation that they can ask you for a favor. Yes. And I like what you're saying about thinking about that at the, the uh, community level is opening the invitation to start the cycle for exchange. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. Because... If you want to talk about what a community is, at the heart of it, it it's an exchange. Yeah, transformations and exchanges. And, and that's kind of how I think it's like you're trying to exchange to make things better. Yeah. You know, not hopefully not make them the same or worse. Sometimes you can't help that, but you're at least doing what you can. So it's like, well, why would yeah. the exchange occur in the first place? Well, you're right. trying to make a transformation that improves the human condition. And that's really lofty speak for just saying, make a good day of it. Yeah for the people around us. Yeah. And it's, it's this constant push and pull of a community. Like I, I go to a job and I put in work yep. and they give me money. And then I take that money and I give it to my family to mm -hmm. support my family. And then my family goes out into the community and we go out to dinner. Um, I, the teachers are, are working and they earn a living and they in turn support my children. Um, in Saginaw, a woman's house, uh, was just hit, hit by a car. Her car mm. drove right into this house, destroyed this house, half of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and she unfortunately couldn't, didn't have the ability to carry home insurance. Mm -hmm. Um, so what do you do? Like this woman now is effectively homeless. Mm. Um, well, what did the community do? Bunch of local contractors said, we will fix your house. And they're constantly on Facebook saying, hey, um, can anybody bring this, bring this? Can you donate a dumpster? We need three guys for this, you know, all of these things. And they are rebuilding her house for free. Like that's the exchange of a community that when I need something, this community around me will be able to meet that need in some way. And I think like at the heart of this integration level, that's, that's what we have to do if we want this attraction retention. We have to be faithful to our promises to each other to say we trust each other enough um, to provide what we are promising to these people who are coming into this community so mm -hmm. that we can say we, we will make good on this agreement that we have made. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the family. Mm -hmm. And that's the integration stage, I think. Yeah, and it's just about getting those first steps. Like we said, is the, the first steps can be the toughest steps, but once we've established that rapport, that mutually beneficial or uh, relationship or that uh, reciprocal or reciprocity, it's, it's, it's that, that idea. And, it's, and then it allows people, I love the example that you give, because everybody got to play to their strengths or play to their passions or play to their competency, and that aligns really well in the workplace. And that's what workplaces are, or mm. profit or nonprofit are meant to do too is is to add value in a product or service for other people, not in and of it for themselves. It's about what you give back and give outward. Amen. So attract, number one. Acquire, number two. Integrate, number three. Train. Tell yeah. me about this. Well, certainly in the workplace, you know, it's what does success look like against that job description that I got? Um, <laughs> it, it's about 37 things. Maybe it's two pages. Yeah. Uh, I, I, this week, what needs to occur and how, how how will I know and how will you know that I did everything that's listed here yeah. uh, to standard and to expectation so that uh, the person that's uh, managed me or supervising me uh, knows it and I know it and that we can be in alignment. It's much better than the opposite. We're both guessing uh, whether we're, yeah. we're going to hit the target or not. And it's starting to look at what are the resources what are some of the obstacles? What are some of the tools? What are some of the connections that we need to be successful in the ways that we previously stated while we are going through this initial stages mm -hmm. of attraction acquisition? And now we're starting to ask ourselves, well, now we need to perform it. 
at what are the gaps, uh, what are the strengths, how can we play to those things in the right here, right now, in the present, so that we can be successful in ways that we've predetermined that brought us together in the first place. Uh, I love how it defines what success is. Mm -hmm. And then it says, in order to achieve that, we, we have to equip you with the tools in order to achieve that. I had a, I had a previous employer and um, just working this job kind of day in, day out. And one of the really frustrating things was as, as employees, and it wasn't just me in this situation, as employees, we all kind of felt like we, we were not given the tools to mm -hmm. be successful. And so that in turn made administration angry because they were like, well, why, why aren't are the things that I need you to do being done? Mm -hmm. like, well, I don't like, I'm, I'm really unclear about this or we don't have this. And then it, it turned into, well, you have to figure that out then. Well, yeah. now if, if you want, again, talking like terms of a community, now I don't, I don't feel like we're on the same team anymore. I, I feel like I'm being exiled from this community saying sink or swim baby mm -hmm. without ever begin a life raft or being taught how to swim. I, I know I can't be successful. Um, and that in the psychology of that turns into, I either like quiet quitting was a thing mm -hmm. kind of months ago where people just kind of go in and, you know, I think, I think the definition of that needs to be redefined, but how I would define a quiet quitting, like you go in and you give nothing. So yeah. mentally, mentally you have quit. Um, or you find another place where you you hope that you can be more successful. And so part of attraction and retention is thinking about what makes people leave. Mm -hmm. Well, when we don't define what success is and we don't give opportunities, uh, enough opportunity or resources for people to be successful, they will go someplace else. Yeah, they're certainly going to be thinking about it. You know, one yeah. foot in, one foot out the door. Engagement is certainly going to be lowered to a degree. So what you are getting through focusing on attending to the needs of the present, removing obstacles, providing resources, having some feedback on how well things are going so that invested parties have some sort of sense and some sort of ability to say, in this newer relationship, uh, how are we making um, a good, clear sense that we're doing what we want to be doing? Are we hitting the target? Or are we way off the target? People like to hit the targets. So that's probably a whole nother conversation, but they don't, they definitely don't like to not hit the targets. Yeah. And you were kind of alluding to that a second ago. It's yeah. like, who, who wants to punch into work or community or life and say, ah, I'm going to be really unsuccessful today. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how yeah. to do it. And I don't know if other people see me not knowing what I'm yeah. doing. That's not a comfortable space for people. Uh, instead, we definitely prefer to be able to have a sense within ourselves and the people that we're connected to that things are going right here and right now, the way that we need them to go. Uh, in, the, in the community, you might be able to think of that as, well, what's the community need for me for it to be able to continue to provide these great things that I like? And maybe it's the products and services. So you need to be a customer of those things. If you like yeah. the businesses and services that are around you, well, they need your support. They need your patronship. They need your recommendations, you know, whether that's a virtual review and, and the like, uh, so that you're being able to engage and to be able to have an influence. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not just about uh, being able to be told what to do. It's about being able to um, apply what's expected of you and then to be able to get some feedback on how well that's going. Yeah, I love I love the example of, of kind of molding this word train into giving people resources that they need to be successful in terms of like supporting small businesses. The, one of the heartbeats of all of our communities, we, we can say all we want, s support local businesses, but if we don't, are not actually providing local businesses with the money that they need to survive, mm -hmm. they will no longer be there. Um, we, we can say the words all we want, but if we're not equipping them with the resources to continue offering what they can offer to our community of value, they will then go away. And I, 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 I don't think you can talk about this word train without talking about the importance of all, all the educational organizations, uh, institutions, here locally in, in Bay and in Saginaw and the region um, in talking about, okay, if we want to equip people with the skills that they need in order for them to be successful and for us to be successful and for them to want to stay here and build a career mm -hmm. here, um, 
educational institutions have to look at the curriculum and say, well, how can we prepare our kids the best? One of the ways that's happening in Bay County is with um, the Bay Area Chamber of Commerce and um, Hey Bay City kind of playing a role in this, but the the business and educator partnership Mm -hmm. where you have this group of employers and educators in a room talking about how can we give our kids the skills that they need to be successful and specifically be successful here mm-hmm. with the skills that they need and employers need. And I think that's such an important part of this conversation because we want jobs for those kids so that they stay here. And in turn, those kids have to be equipped with skills to be able to fill those jobs as well. Yeah. So those I actually was on a, a phone call on the way here uh, with career training uh, awesome. education, uh, talking about a very similar topic and, it's the idea. A lot of those those organizations talk in like KSAOs and knowledge, skills, abilities, and, and other attributes. So mm-hmm. knowledge, like what can you do with your mind? You know, skills, what can you do with the combination of your mind and your your hands or your body? Um, and then your um, abilities would be like, is the environment being a conducive one? That's kind of what we're talking about now. Is is people may have the knowledge and skills. Uh, to apply, but if they're not in an environment that's one that's supportive, then it, the knowledge and the skills really aren't so helpful. And that O's at the KSAOs, it, other characteristics might be like personality traits, knowing like soft skills or professionalism, mm-hmm. knowing how to conduct yourself, how to maintain yourself when you run into trouble. Um, and that's some of the competencies that these organizations seek to build so that people can enter into the workforce successfully. Now, in the jobs, it gets a little bit trickier, which is part of the conversation I was having, is that we don't really think in KSAOs, or at least I haven't been in too many workplaces that they're like the KSAOs. Um, but what we think about is like accountabilities or duties. So what, but essentially they're speaking the same things is what are the competencies that we need to train into people so that they can be successful uh, in what they're responsible and expected to be uh, contributing? Yeah, I love that. Um, growth of a community means mutual success. Uh, the success of an individual means the success of a community. And so if you're looking and you're training and you're equipping and saying, here are the resources you need to be successful, go be successful so that we can also be successful. That's again, the exchange It's like, we will provide you with the tools, with the resources. You provide me with what you can do with those tools and resources Mm -hmm. and we build on each other. Yeah. It's, it's kind of a chicken or the egg thing. It's like, does, do people like competency or opportunities to display competency Mm -hmm. because we need them? Uh, to be, or do we need competency in order to be successful? But I think all that really matters is that people really want and need opportunities and environments to provide competency. Yeah, absolutely. So attract, acquire, integrate, train, we're equipping people, we're exchanging resources that we need to be successful. What's next? We got to develop. It's like, well, what the heck's the difference between training and development? Well, I'll say it's training takes care of the present, development is thinking about the future. Mm. So we could be doing all the lovely things that we've talked about just prior. We've got the resources, we're, we're on the job, we're in the classroom, we're doing our thing in the community, everything is, is going good right here, right now. But it always turns into like, where is this going? Where is this leading? And going right back to the date thing too, is maybe you've been dating for too long. <laughs> yeah. Talking to you, you 15 year daters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I, I want to know what this is leading to. And there's really no escape from that. Not to make this a big psychology conversation. No, but, I love it. But yeah. we're conscious uh, beings and we're thinking about right here and right now. But we want to make sure that where things are going is going to be uh, good too. Yeah. Or at least as good as we can make them. So, and, and things change. Environments change. People change. We were talking about that a little bit yep. as well about how your wants and needs or values have shifted over time. So even if we arrive at this state where the present is being taken care of masterfully, uh, those variables are going to shift. So we need to be thinking about, uh, well, what are the needs, maybe going back to that idea of competencies or knowledge and skills and abilities, what are those of the future? And what are we doing to lay a ground for the direction of what's needed when it comes to people uh, to be able to be successful, to continue uh, to be effective, to be able to continue to grow. In the workplace, a lot of people want to know, like, is this a job or a career? Uh, what can mm-hmm. I do to enlarge my job? What can I do 
uh, to enrich my job? What extra responsibilities can I take on? Maybe it's some of the monetary rewards like compensation. Is What, is, uh, what does that look like over a five-year period? Maybe uh, non-monetary might be, well, what's the recognition or influence or the ability to contribute? Mm -hmm. But people want promotions because they want to know that things are going somewhere that's beneficial or prosperous. They want to feel like their efforts are being valued in the present. But we can't just be thinking about training in the present. We have to think about what that's in service of, and that's leading to a, a beneficial future. It, this is just like like monetary investments. Like you, you're, you're, you're constantly putting money away so that it, mm. it, it, it grows over time yeah. so that, that you, you know that down the road, that life, that future me is going to be supported in some way. My needs are going to be met because I, I'm giving these investments over time. And you're, you're in these terms and your time and your energy and your effort, like those are also investments. We don't typically define it like that. It's like mm -hmm. I go to work yes. and I do work. Or I, I participate and I engage with the community. But what what that really is 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 I'm I'm saying I am sacrificing something mm -hmm. for this, for you to be successful. And what is that gonna get me down the road? Yes, it's gonna get me this paycheck right now, but where is this heading? Where is it yep. leading? Like, is this it? Or is there more? And depending on what that agreement was in that acquisition stage you both might be cool with like, this is it. Mm -hmm. Like all I want is this job. I don't want a career. I don't want to, I don't want to move up through the organization. Yeah. Like I don't want to end up being city manager and running the show. Like all I want to do is this. Cool. If both parties have agreed to that, you win success. But if, if the agreement kind of felt like, oh, this is going to lead to more, but I'm not really seeing more. Mm -hmm. um, it's not really developing into something that leads to disengagement. Now, now I remove myself mentally or physically from the situation because m my value is this has to grow. It has to lead to something more. I'm uh, my my family is growing. Mm -hmm. um, my career aspirations are more than just this. Mm -hmm. um, I I know I have more value to provide, and I want to have an opportunity to provide that. And if you don't have that to somebody who has that value, you feel claustrophobic. Like all of a sudden, it feels like I am in this tiny little room, and there's no way out, and I need to figure out a way because <laughs> like this can't be it. Like I can't live here forever. Yeah, and it's that idea of I, I know that I'm going to and the people around me are going to need things in the future. Yes. I, 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 I have to take care of my present needs, but I know that there's going to be future needs, but I don't know exactly what they are as clearly as I know what my current needs are. Mm -hmm. and I like that you're using that investment um, metaphor because you hear that all the time is what is this amounting to or what's it all going to add up to? Um, and going back to that geekiness on languages is, is, well, we're using those terms for a reason. And I liked what you said, too, about stability versus change. Is, well, some people or some situations, circumstances may prefer more stability. We're going to do it this way for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And other situations require or prefer a more frequent change. Mm -hmm. And it's funny that change is also <laughs> tucked in there as well. So it is, like you said, this continuation of dialogue to be able to make sure that there's a good fit uh, between related parties. I don't want to just say employer and employee. These things work like you're saying in the community lens as well, mm -hmm. but it is this continuation of looking at the fit. Yeah. It's, um, it, it, development I think is, is kind of a mutual acknowledgement that says you are important enough to me and to us to say, we are going to do everything we can so that you continue being a part of us for the long term. And if, what I love about how you frame these these steps, and we have two more to go, is that it really follows this transition from attraction to mm -hmm. the deep parts of retention. And we you have to acknowledge both of those. Sometimes when these conversations start, a community says, "We our, our population is declining. We have to attract more people mm -hmm. from outside of us. Yes, that is true. But if you don't acknowledge the needs of the people who are already here, which in a lot of ways takes way less investment, 
um, is easier to create change with and improvements with because like they are here. They're already here. All we have to do is make it a little bit better. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and you'll encourage them to stay. And it, uh, that's what I love about this. It really says attraction and retention is the is a process that everybody's at kind of a different stage of. Mm -hmm. And in order to to retain that person, we have to meet them at the stage that they're at. Mm -hmm. um, if If we're saying, well, we're going to sustain you and like, but they haven't been given the tools or the resources to be successful. We're, we're here and they're there. Yes. And we're, we're not talking, we're not meeting them where they're at. And that's what I love about this is you're meeting people where they're at. Absolutely. And, and retention is a, is a, um, an ends. It's not a means and, and attractions isn't a, a means either. Mm -hmm. Um, what we have to take a look at is, well, what, what makes retention occur? And it's actually these things that we've been talking about. It's uh, everything in between that allows people to be able to be uh, negotiating and living through some of the promises that have been made yeah. and opportunities for growth and mastery, connectedness, purpose, significance, a positive culture, safety, security. And those things dictate retention. But if we're just looking for the answers within the idea of retention, I think we come up a little bit more short than what we need to to be able to actually nurture this super critical step because we don't want to have uh, 100,000 people in and 100,000 people out. But mm -hmm. if you have to ask yourself, well, why are the 100,000 people out, are out? Well, it's some of these factors that are in between yeah. that mediate the beginning and what a lot of people think is the end point. I know we still got one more point after this, but it... This retention piece is something that's super, super critical, but it's really a fulfillment of these promises and these uh, psychological contracts that and formal ones that were made. Uh, and then it's the continuous fit between invested parties that dictates mm -hmm. how engaged someone is. And if you're engaged, going back to the <laughs> dating metaphor, your intentions to stay are probably pretty strong because I've never heard anybody get married to their job, even though people say they do. Mm -hmm. I've never heard anybody get married or have a wedding, let's say, uh, to their community. So, yeah. you know, a little bit more mobile in terms of getting in and getting out. Yeah. And this, um, this retention stage, the sixth stage of it, um, it, let, let's keep ro rolling with yeah. this metaphor. Like, you're married. Yay. Cool, but that's not where it ends. Like, now you have entered into an even deeper relationship. <laughs> and when you, you use the word nurture, and, I, and mm. I, love, I, I love that. Now you're in the nurturing stage. Like, you, you, don't, you don't just say, you're hired. Mm. Cool. Or you like it here. The end. Like, there's there ha you have to cultivate that relationship over time to say no we're we're still in it like we're we're still working together we're still on the same team we're still a part of the same community and you have a great definition here in your in your nifty little graph that oh, I'll hopefully you. remember to uh, <laughs> uh, show on the video it, retain efforts that keep uh, people engaged and satisfied. Reducing attrition through opportunities for growth, recognition, positive culture, and a sense of belonging. And I love, I love that, like you're kind of speaking from an, like a workforce perspective, and I'm kind of speaking from a community perspective because there's, they're they're almost exactly the same dynamics in that, um, we've moved through all of these steps as a community. We have things that you value and opportunities, all of those things. We, th we need to continue providing those opportunities, those resources at either a higher level or more in different opportunities and resources because otherwise we signal to these people like, this is all you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So as your family grows, you're going to continually get less. Um, as uh, societal conditions change, like this is all we got. So if the world outside changes for some factor, like... I guess we lose. Like you, you have to continually demonstrate to each other in the community that uh, growth in some way is happening, whether that's growth spreading out or growth in terms of just deep, digging the roots deeper. So that's a new community group, a new mural, mm -hmm. a housing development. It's it's these visual signals to the community that says like we are making things happen. We are making things better because like we all do, we get that brand new car yeah. and we're like, oh my gosh, this is a car, <laughs> this is amazing. And then over time, we just become desensitized to it. Now it's, 
a little bit, it's full of all all other coffee cups and the garbage and things like that. Um, We have to continually remind ourselves and do better things because like everybody, we become kind of desensitized. We take things for granted and it's easy to miss um, some of the great things that are going on. Yeah. I I like what you're saying because if you get to retention, what do you do? You go all the way back to attraction. Yes. Uh, you got to keep looking good. You got to keep putting your best foot yeah, forward. I love, I love phrasing yeah. it as a cycle. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It, 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 you're not, you know, like to that idea of being married is like, well, I yeah. guess I, I don't need to put my best foot forward yeah. anymore. You still got to go on date night. <laughs> yeah. Married people, like, yeah. you still got to dress up, you know, like yep. get out of those PJs every once in a while, <laughs> you know, show your spouse that you care. Yeah. I love you. Like you have to continually go through this process, mm-hmm. but maybe at a deeper level every time. Now, yep. now it's not the first date anymore. But it's the date 17 years into your relationship. Yeah. Like, well, yeah, it's still dating. It's still the situation. You still have to demonstrate that you, that psychological contract, et cetera, et cetera. But it's at a deeper level than it was up here. Absolutely. Every day, you know, there's things that are going to either attract or repel, you know, personally, or whether that's in the workplace or in the community. And every day, people are making a choice of what they're going to connect themselves to. Uh, they, they wake up and say, all right, am I going to go to this job? Uh, am I going to stay in this relationship? Am I going to uh, get involved in that community group? So every, every day we're going through these factors of acquisition, and every day we need to then be thinking about how am I being welcomed into it, this activation piece. And then every day we need to say, do I have what I need to be successful today? And I want to have a sense that that's connected to where this is going. Mm-hmm. And if all that goes great, or the better that that goes, the better the chances for retention. But an overemphasis on retention for the sake of retention doesn't, um, it doesn't target the issue. Yes. Yeah. There's a last stage, the seventh yeah. stage. So we've <laughs> gone through attract, acquire, integrate, train, develop, retain. What's the last part? Well, we got to sustain. And, and a lot of times we think about that environmentally, and, and that's a great way to think about it. We got to think about that continually in the sense of people. So we can retain people. Uh, but we're not mortal, unfortunately. And it's a sensitive topic because, well, we don't necessarily like looking at that in a culture that's so uh, focused on, on being youthful and continually outdoing yourself. Yes, yeah. Um, so it's it's got some sensitivity and, and some humanity inside of it that, that maybe these other factors don't have in the same way. Mm-hmm. So one of the ways that we might think about that is, well, what do we mean when we say sustain when it relates to people in the workplace or the community? Well, it means in the workplace is succession, as, as people uh, move on or retire, or as, as sometimes people get promoted, or sometimes people are leave the organization for one reason or another, what's going on the people dimension going to allow things to continue to flourish, or at least not get as bad as they could if we do nothing? At the community level, it might be like generational continuity. Who's going to backfill these beautiful uh, businesses and, and nonprofits that are providing products and services that allow our community to flourish? And we need to be thinking about that and getting that right because how we were talking a little bit before is sometimes in the Midwest, we have the luxury of watching trends on the coast occur. And then we have the luxury of them being able to um, either not do anything about them because they're just sort of this pop thing that really wasn't a real uh, matter of significance. Or we can make them better because we got to see other places do them first, like the first uh, person over the hill getting to see what's over the landscape. But in this case... Uh, we're not the youngest uh, population uh, locally uh, within our state. And certainly within our state, we're not the, the youngest population within our country. So I think that we might be the first uh, group over the hill uh, being able to, t- and that's actually a metaphor people use, uh, you know, I'm actually technically I am. So I'm not talking about other people besides myself, mm-hmm. you know, as far as being over the hill, so to speak. But we do need to be thinking about how do we make things lasting? And, and I do think that that's what people are really after when they think about legacy or things to continue on uh, beyond their reach. And, and I think that's a, a, a marker for a, a good life, whether that's personal or professional. Mm. And I think that there's not enough discussion going on about how do we provide training and development resources at the community level, at the workplace level, and, and even at the individual level uh, to be able to flourish as things ultimately start to shift in more dramatic ways. Yeah, I the, the, again, you have such a great definition here on, on your graphic, planning, sustain, planning and preparedness for upholding goods and services, preserving heritage, maintaining relationships, 
all while embracing the future. Um, I, I love this part of it because it highlights it, it's, not, it's not good enough to just address the issue now. Right. Um, because like you can, you can throw a bunch of resources, a bunch of brain power, man power, woman power, whoever power mm -hmm. um, into a strategy, into addressing an issue. And if it is solved for or addressed for six months or a year, or you're providing some kind of value or resource and you you just you just threw so much at it and it and it's only around for a year. It's it's in the long run, it, it doesn't exist. It hasn't made a difference. It hasn't existed. You haven't sustained that value over time. Mm -hmm. it, you're not. It's not an additive approach to growing a community. You just it's a flash in a pan. Like yeah, we're really excited about this, and then boom, it goes away because we we didn't think. We have to keep this going. This has to be supported into the future. Um, yeah, we benefited from it as our generation for a brief time. But where the magic really happens is when our next generation, the generations after, they don't have to worry about this, this anymore. They have mm -hmm. this value or they have this resource already given to them because we plan for it to sustain it over time. And now they can go on and they can build on top of it and they can make it even better. We can get more um, they're not constantly um, addressing the same generational challenges mm -hmm. um, over and over and over and over and over and over again because nobody said, hey, how do we make sure that this goes on for the next hundred years? How do we make sure this incredible community resource keeps getting better over the next hundred years? Mm -hmm. So like we put in a lot of work for 10, 15 years, maybe, and then it disappears like vapor. And then 40 years down the road, somebody's like, you know what we really need? Like, <laughs> oh, we had that back, you know, back in 19, you know, so-and-so. Like, we shouldn't be ever be having those conversations. And so we got to plan to sustain these resources over time. Yeah, is, is I think that idea of leave things better than you found them. My brother likes to say a, a saying about his children that, that my uh, ceiling is their floor. Or maybe thinking of the idea of verticality is you want to send the elevator back down. Mm. Is, is what are we doing to create provision for opportunities for the people that we can nurture and mentor and support uh, that ultimately are going to inherit for better or for worse uh, what it is that we've built and what we've what we've built is obviously what we value otherwise we wouldn't have built it in the first place uh, so that it can continue and it can uh, thrive beyond and and that's that's that becomes challenging uh, because it allows it sort of makes it an existential thing we have to look within and, and yeah. It's yep. not necessarily the most fun thing to do. Right. Uh, it's much more fun to bake, figure out how we can outdo ourselves and reach a new peak. And that's yeah. in every single commercial, at least that I see. Maybe the algorithms targeted me. Um, and this probably will get cut. But uh, the first time I noticed this was in the movie Logan. And it's a superhero, Wolverine. Maybe uh -huh. people are familiar because of the new Wolverine uh, Deadpool movie. And this superhero, Wolverine, was was kind of at the elder stages. He was kind of past his, his prime. You know, one of his superpowers is he could make these claws come out of his hands and they weren't coming out so great. He had to like pull them out and it was really painful. He could still do the thing, but not as yeah. good as he had done it before. And and I was riveted. I like, I've never thought of life past peak and what yeah. it looks like to be able to extend effectiveness, extend connectivity, extend significance, extend those um, things that bring such richness to life past peak. Because I think it's a failure if the only way that uh, life or business or communities are invested in is how do we continue to be um, outdoing or how do we go beyond peak or stay at peak? Yeah, it, It's just not an option. Things change. People change. Things move on. So it's how can we embrace that change in a way that, and ultimately that ends up being the conclusion of this movie is, well, here's what change uh, looks like. It's actually a motif for generational continuity. Yeah. But that was just so affecting to me because I had such tunnel vision and wanted myself to stay in this pace, uh, in yeah. space of peak, peak, and outdoing the peak. I, I think that how that, that highlights an element of, of sometimes the, the challenge to this stage of sustaining and planning over time. Um, because like you said, it, 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 it's not in a lot of ways fun. Um, it, it, and it's also hard yeah. because uh, you're you're seeing a need and you're filling a need and 
um, you're you're making things work, and you have a thousand fires to put out, and you you, you have a limited amount of time and energy, and all of those things, and so you're running around, um, you know, playing your part and like operating at peak, like you're like you're saying, um, and then here comes this idea of well, like what are you gonna do after this, <laughs> or like how, like what are you gonna do when you're gone, yeah. and you're like I can't think about that right mm. now. I don't have the resources for it. I don't have the time mm-hmm. for it. Like I'll think about that later. Yeah. And then, you, you know, before you know it, end of life, end of career. And now what? Like mm-hmm. now, if, especially if you're kind of the, the, the gatekeeper to that, now we have to redo that 30 years of experience again. Like now we have to reinvent that wheel again. Um, now, now we're missing out on all of that expertise that you have and all of those resources and all of those things that you could have given to somebody else and said, now you go and run with these and make mm-hmm. them even better and grow them and uh, recruit five other people to help you because it's going to take all of us. Um, or uh, this failure to plan over time in terms of like resources. Um, I, I did this interview with um, this mayor in small town Appalachian, Ohio, and he was talking about this project in town and it was it was formerly this like really run down vacant area there's a little bit of woods and stuff but it looked really trashy and so they invested a lot of money into creating this park and it was a beautiful park and the community was like oh my gosh like this this is what we need and we're giving something to our kids and it was a is a point of pride and um he said what happened to that park over time was because we didn't as a community say we have this amazing thing how do we keep it amazing forever because mm-hmm. they didn't talk about that that second part they yeah. just like yep. it's the park and we're raising money and look at it it's beautiful and construction that thrill of the moment um they're so focused on that that over time they forgot to care about it mm-hmm. and so what happened was this beautiful park this former gem of the community overgrows with weeds mm-hmm. and trash and it's um n- no kids are playing there because parents are like that is not safe like i do not <laughs> want to bring my my kids to this place and so what was formerly this attractive thing this a uh, value thing this resource thing that said community we care about you enough to build this thing for us um it turned into a, a sign of incompetency Mm-hmm. of failure as a community. Look at what we had and look at what it turned into. Like, look at how incompetent we are. Look mm-hmm. at how we failed at this at every level. Who's responsible for the, you know, all of, all of those conversations. And so that is such a critical piece of the puzzle because what, what is success right now may not always be success later on. If you don't acknowledge, like, we have to sustain this success, this resource, these opportunities over time so that this is always a positive part of our community. Otherwise, what happens is 10 years down the road, 15 years, 20 years down the road, people are going to look back at us now and say, why, like, why didn't they see this coming? Like, yes. Why didn't they plan for this? Why didn't they say this is going to take money over time to make sure that it's always good. Like, of course it's going to take money over time. And the, our future generations are going to look back at us with disdain mm-hmm. and say like, why, why didn't you guys think about this? Because we missed this part of it, the sustaining part of it. Yeah. We have an obligation to ourselves and the people around us right now. And it's a little bit easier to do that because we're equipped with uh, so much limited conscientiousness and, and resources, uh, understanding of the world that mm-hmm. trying to project into the future is tough. But but actually, people are a lot better at it than what it seems because we've done pretty good so far. The world overall uh, seems to be trending for the positive, less poverty. We're getting pretty good on the environmental thing. So I think that people are capable of doing very tough things. I think that's one of the more popular. We can do hard things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as uh, is, is challenging as it sounds, I think we're up to the task. And actually, I'd say that, that people are built for the task. And I think we've been that way yes. uh, for, for a very long time, not to turn this into a different conversation about evolution yeah. or anything like that, but... We're, we're, we're built to carry a weight and, and, to, and to do something to make things better. We all say that we want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. That's a common saying. But I also think that maybe we want to leave something um, that's within something that's bigger than ourselves. Yeah. I, I, what I love about this, this 
further definition of attraction retention that you have in this seven part framework is that one, it highlights the, the challenge that is this. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not an easy fix. It's not a quick fix. It's not, it, it's, there are many moving parts to it that will take a lot of different um, efforts in all different areas of a community in order to make attraction and retention work. So it highlights that this is, this is a big issue. On the other side of it, in the further definition of it, it says, this is a big issue, but here's a roadmap of yeah. how we can be successful. It's one thing facing, facing a challenge and saying, oh my goodness, like I have no idea where to start or what to do or where to go. And what this does, it outlines a roadmap and says, well, this is how, like this is a human psychological issue. Mm -hmm. And so if we look at what we need as people and how we grow as people, and if we meet those needs, this will happen. And so I love that this, this helps give a clue as to solutions rather than just saying like, look at this big hairy monster. Oh. Yeah. In, in one hand, attraction retention sounds kind of simple. Like, all right, we got to get them. We got to keep them. Yeah. But it's also very nebulous uh -huh. uh, because the how piece um, is, is it needs to be fleshed out. And I don't think that they answer everything that's in between in and of themselves, which why there's so many of those steps that we've discussed happen right in between yeah. with that importance of being able to say as much as we'd like to just have things retained or kept as they are, the, they're going to change of their own accord, um, whether we like it or not. Yeah, I am. Um I, I love this conversation. I think that we we as a as a community, as multiple communities, individual communities, as a regional community, I I just think we have to talk, have more conversations yeah. about this because it it's just one so important to the life and future of our our community. But two, this this helps figure out the solution. Like how can we actually address this 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 issue? Um, so. I, I, I really want this, this part of the conversation is so important, like defining and talking about ideas and um, words and you know, psychology and things like that. But I, I don't want, I don't want this to be where like our conversation ends because like you can talk all you want about like big ideas, like yeah. look at my seven step yeah. framework to attraction and retention. But if, if there isn't like an, like practical applications of it, it you might as well go like, eat a popsicle or, you know, play chess or something like that, because it doesn't really change the world at all. So I, if you're down for it, I would, I don't know what this conversation would look like, but I would love to like say, we talked a bunch about, uh, about a bunch of ideas in our last conversation, like what are practical applications of addressing each part of these or like, w like how could this work? Or mm -hmm. like, I would, I would love to talk about that because there's got to be action involved with ideas. So if you're down for, the, for a conversation like that, I'm down. Oh, you can count me in. I mean, and okay. you're right. I mean, we, there's a lot of great theories out there. The theories are important because yes. they inform the practice. And then to get, you know, into the academic speech is that praxis would be the, the, the union of those things. Yeah. Let's combine the theory with the practice because what we don't want to have is a bunch of practice that isn't guided by any sound theory. Right. And you don't want to, like you said, just have a bunch of, theory that you're like, this really could work yes. if we did anything, but yeah. we got to do something. Yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, I'd love to have that conversation with you, like explore this idea more and m people, if you're listening to this and you are also exploring this idea more, explore with us, talk to people that you know, right like, come up with your own seven step plan and, or pick apart Jason seven step part like I think number four is who we like or you're over complete like please like we we need to talk about all of yeah. this um, because we lose when we don't we lose when we stop talking about it we lose when we say um, we lose when we only talk about it and don't do anything about it or when you when you're doing something about it but you're not doing something continually better about yeah. it and becoming more informed. So, man, I, Jason, I want to thank you for the work that you're doing over in Midland, for it, giving me an hour and nine minutes to be able to talk shop with somebody hey. about this. It's super, super cool. Um, let, let's talk about what that next conversation will look like. Let's see, rope more people in. Maybe I can get Hillary Doe from Michigan on on like one of these little episodes and get her conversation in. It would be super, super cool. So. 
Uh, Jason Story, thanks so much for the time, man. Uh, we, of course, will be talking again soon. Um, man, it, as always, just really, really great to talk to you. All the same, Phil. I love every minute of it. We could talk for four more hours, but this is probably a good place to stop for yes, now. Yes, <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much. All right, you got it. Sweet. <laughs>